Specialty tools require specialty knowledge. Today we'll get you up to speed on how fly cutters work and how you can work with them. Speeds, feeds, and toolpathing wisdom is on the way. And oh yeah, we're going big. Joining the CNC community, we all start with the basics. One quarter inch and one eighth inch end mills. But soon we're looking for more exotic and useful tools to accomplish specific tasks. Fly cutters, designed for flattening surfaces and sometimes called flattening bits or face mills, are structured completely differently than those standard end mills. To all the machinists yelling at the screen, I hear you. Yes, technically a fly cutter is a single blade end mill used to face metal stock. True. However, colloquially, 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 usage of the term fly cutter now includes face mills. As the CNC universe has expanded, so too have the definitions. These end mills contain multiple inserts in various configurations designed to surface wood or wood-like materials. These indexable inserts are identical to what you would find in the helical head of a planer or jointer. Nowadays you'll hear face mill, surfacing bits, and fly cutter used interchangeably. Shell mill, less so, but if you're into metal, you know. Typically these cutters start at one inch in size. In terms of area, this is already 16 times larger than the largest end mill many of you regularly run. Now, if you have a spindle capable of holding half inch tooling, it's simply too tempting not to order a gigantic face mill. Because if a one inch face mill is fun, a two and a half inch face mill is at least 21.7 times more fun. Actually, you wanna really see some math? The area of a two and a half inch end mill is 100 times that of a quarter inch end mill. 100. So even while utilizing that small one inch fly cutter, you'll have to consider several major factors. At two and a half inches, you must honor those factors for your own safety, and we will get to that. So there are two options for starting a cut effectively. Number one is ramping. In our universe, it's included in Carbide Create Pro. Ramping creates an angle of entry to the cut. This allows for various cutters to enter the material with less shock to both the cutter and the material being cut. Ideally, you also employ ramping when using bowl bits and other large end mills in pockets or deep slot contours. This toolpath will have a fly cutter slowly achieving maximum depth. However, this is not the ideal angle of approach for facing mills. The best way to have a fly cutter enter material is horizontally. This involves beginning your toolpath partially or entirely outside of your stock. By oversizing the facing pattern, you can control how much of the cutter head is engaged during the initial plunge. Whether you're using the facing toolpath now available in Carbide Create Pro version 8 or manually constructing a facing toolpath utilizing a vector pattern, as covered in this previous video, you can control how much engagement the cutter encounters as it plunges. You can also plunge in front or behind the material by oversizing the Y direction of your facing path. Again, this reduces the shock to the cutter, the material, and your power plant, be it a VFD or a router. But Kevin, I don't have ramping and there's not enough room on my machine to plunge outside of my stock. I need another plan. Okay, fine, let's go with brute force. If you're plunging straight down, slow your plunge rate setting and take a shallower depth of cut. It's not ideal, but it can be done. Also, use a smaller fly cutter. Okay, that gets you through the start of a cut, but there are some issues you will encounter. This is the most frustrating issue surrounding use of these cutters and the one which receives the most bad advice. If you're experiencing burning, take two of these. That's right, the vast majority of the time an RPM reduction will eliminate this issue. Your RPMs are simply too high. Think of trying to start a fire like a caveman or a boy scout. Turning a stick into wood creates friction and that's what you're doing here, creating heat through friction. For every wood, there is a window of RPM range that will cut effectively without creating burning. Maple has a smaller window because of its hardness and sugar content. That's right, the sugar content. Now, RPMs are not the sole issue you might encounter. If you have burning in the corners, try upping your feed rate. Or as mentioned, utilize the facing toolpath so there are no corners where the end mill has a momentary change in direction while engaged in the material. As with any cut or end mill, you should be seeing chips, not dust. The size of the material coming off directly relates to your feed rate. Finally, check your inserts. Be sure they are sharp. These are indexable and replaceable for a reason. Dull blades equals friction, no matter the tool. On our Shapeoko 5 and HDM machines, the bit setter has a larger top. This change was intentional. That larger head is meant to accurately capture the Z0 setting of fly cutters. Look at the construction of our McFly 1-inch fly cutter and you'll see these bottom blades are in fact the bottom of the end mill. 
Moving to the one and a half inch face mill I regularly use, it too has blades in the middle which the larger bit setter can accurately capture. But if we look at this giant two and a half inch cutter, the Z0 of the blades and the Z0 of the center of the cutter do not match up. This can create havoc. If you were to utilize bit setter to set a Z0 with this cutter, the actual cutting depth would be approximately two millimeters deeper than the measured depth by the bit setter. This is because of the recess in the middle of the end mill. If you want to use this type of crazy cutter, disable bit setter and set your Z0 manually. This will ensure the depth you specified is the depth cut. But with this cutter, be sure to plunge outside your material. Otherwise, no machines were harmed in the making of this video. Okay, let's give you some settings. I'm going with walnut for this test because it's a wood you're likely to use and it does appear on the Janka scale of wood hardness. As with all things CNC, remember, there's no guarantee these settings are gonna work on your particular project, even with a piece of walnut. These are a little bit more aggressive basis points from which you can start. So think of them that way. You have to dial in your own. Here we go. We begin with the McFly one inch cutter from Carbide 3D, quarter inch shank and suitable for a wide swath of projects you might dream up. The cutter is on a facing tool path and running at 3000 millimeters per minute. Step over 12.7 millimeters, RPM 16,000. My plunge rate is set at 750 millimeters per minute, depth of cut three millimeters. And I'm getting good quality size of chips, not too much stress on the cutter or material, a nice clean cut. If you want American units, they're on the screen. Next up, the one and a half inch face mill that requires a half inch collet along with a suitable spindle. 80 millimeter water cooled power here, running at 5,000 millimeters per minute, 1,000 millimeter per minute plunge rate, 18,000 RPMs, and a depth of cut, five millimeters. Step over is gonna be just shy of 20 millimeters. Again, American units on the screen. Good chips and smooth sound achieved. Side note, always run dust collection. This is done for example purposes only so you can see the cutting happening. The dust is ridiculous. Finally, the two and a half inch giant set manually for Z0 again in the 80 millimeter spindle. I've turned off the bit setter to get an accurate Z setting and here we go. Feed rate, 200 inches per minute. Plunge rate, 200 inches per minute. Depth of cut, 0.31 inches. Step over, 1.25 inches. Yes, one and a quarter inches. And again, the same 18,000 RPM. Check the chips and listen to the cut. Your eyes and ears are the ultimate guide with any end mill on any project. You'll notice I maintain that same 18,000 RPMs across a number of cuts. That's because it's a good window for the spindle. A nice blend of speed and power. With large end mills like this, it's important for you to read and respect any manufacturer limits on RPMs. Do your reading, pay attention for your own safety. One final very important note is this. Because all wood varies in hardness depending on a variety of factors, there are no bulletproof settings. Always pay attention to your machine and adjust accordingly. I love new tools. Facing end mills or fly cutters should definitely be in your arsenal. And hopefully some knowledge gained from this video will get you closer to success on your next CNC project. Until then, we'll be here in the studio thinking about more information, ideas, and inspiration to pass along.